Well, how do that, people in the view of us? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and we're doing a poll, a deep dive video, people, in vlog, sort of, um, well, not vlog, was it podcasty type format? Yeah. So anyway, I put out a poll. What would keep you coming back to No Man's Sky? Pick the one you like the most. Add your own idea to the comments. Plan to do a deep dive videos soon. Okay, radio. So, the ability to terraform planets, bring dead systems back to life. 27% of people love that idea. Then there's raids into the realm of glass, a void for crazy ship parts and rare loot. 29% of people have hit that one up, and that is the winner winner chicken dinner of the actual poll. We've got Mega Fauna to hunt on planets and oceans, boss level danger. 16% of people went for that one. The ability to create your own challenges and expeditions for players to run. Only five people hit that one up. Thank you, Peggy. And 23% of people said it's too hard to pick just one. I want to see the poll results. Yeah, with a typo in it. But yeah, 23% of people hit that one up. 94 freaking comments. Oh my days, what have I done to myself, people? I don't know whether I can read every single freaking 94 comments. That's a lot of comments. Okay, anyway, we've got Noah Lloyd that says more than one uniform biome across the entire planet. Yes, multi biomes. That'd be lovely. Okay, so I won't dive into replies. That might cut it down a little for me, mightn't it? Anyway, I'll, I'll just expand them so you can sort of see them if you want to pause it or whatever. Okay. Cool, yeah. Anyway, scrolling down, we've got Hyper Turbo Techno Mike. That's a name and a half, isn't it? As stated again, more variety in terms of planets and assets to make exploration more interesting instead of yet another gameplay loop. Eight people hit a like to that one, Hyper Turbo Techno Mike. Heck yes, yeah, so you've got a few people that are a fan of that one. We've got Tolstar the King. Hello there, King Tolstar. The world building and the lore. There hasn't been anything new in that regard for a while. But as soon as Hello Games adds more, I'll be crawling back again. Four people. Hit a like to that one. Security. Double nine, double nine. The ability to collect fish and animals and build aquariums and zoos. Randomised combat like dungeons akin to derelict freighters would be swell. But really, aquariums and zoos would do it for me. <laughs> Nine people hit up a, a, a like to that, and you got two replies as well. I do like the idea of having an aquarium. I mean, we do already have aquariums that we can place, but we can't do anything about the fish and the creatures that are inside of it. So, yeah, I think that'd be quite nice. And also to have, like, maybe holding pens for your actual pets. So when you're not using your pets, at least they're inside their holding pen. And maybe they can still lay eggs, so you can go back there and pick up a whole cluster of eggs. Because I'm often being asked for eggs from my pets, but unless I'm constantly feeding them, getting them out and nurturing them and doing all sorts of stuff it's too sort of hands on it it'd be nice to have pens for them maybe lay them out in your base or on your freighter if people visit your base or freighter they can see your pets there that'd be nice that we give you your zoo in a roundabout way and i think that could be a decent way of implementing it and going back to Tolstar King, I am a law buff, and I love law, so yeah, definitely would up, be up for more law. Hopefully when we get ARG Part 4, that might be realised in anyway. Beachman2943, I'm hoping for something along the lines of every galaxy has an exclusive spaceship part that you can only get by reaching the core, and it's randomisation for each player encouraging more exploration. And there's six people that have hit that one up. I guess people inside the view of us. Right here. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of feel that it would be nice if we had more variety to the galaxies to encourage exploration. But getting some loot would probably do that. But I think that's a very tall order to get one piece of randomised ship parts. Then again, you could get 256 of them, which could be quite cool if they're all unique. Hmm. Yeah. It's a nice idea. Nice idea. Stray Dog says being able to turn the settlements into towns then cities. Maybe even a metropolis. That would be quite epic. There's 17 likes for that. So a lot of love for that idea, Stray Dog. Um, the only thing is, this Nintendo Switch can't even cope with settlements. So 
I don't know whether that will be on the cards, or if it is, it might only be for limited either consoles or PCs, next-gen worthy, perhaps. Who knows? But yeah, nice idea. Knucklehead West Wind. Ironically, better lighting options for bases. I want to be able to build a lot, but every time I build anything slightly big, I just have trouble lighting it up because there aren't enough options. Eh, it'd be nice. Yes, if there was more ambient glowy parts or something, I don't know. But yeah, just wait till daytime. Sunlight comes up, solves that problem. But yeah, I know what you mean, though. Sound author. I never even thought about terraforming. That's a really cool idea. Probably wouldn't gel with the procedural generation, though. Well, technically, every single planet is procedurally generated. So if we had a terraformer that just lets us play with the sliders, so we could choose how the planet actually looks, because that's all that happens in the background of every single planet, how it's terraformed, is it has sliders. Or at least that's what Hello Games have said during some of their dev conferences and things like that. I've got a whole playlist on how No Man's Sky was made, and they talk about how the planets are actually generated. Anyway, Meeks Bennett. I want legit flying fauna companions. I don't care how hard it is to get. I just want the ability to earn and own a dragon or giant eagle or whatever. Yeah, so there are ways that people have captured creatures like the dragons or the eagles using a biodome and glitching it on top of one of them while they're mid-flight. And then you go in the biodome, then you can interact with the creature and tame it that way. Other people have used save editors like Miyogi. If you hit up the helpers party over on Facebook, join there and put out a request for a flying fauna, I'm sure somebody will oblige. Anyway, we've got Critical Optimist. Some form of seamless space travel, at least reworking of space travel, to make it seem more like you're travelling through endless universe and not simply recycling assets in the same box after a loading screen. It does feel that way. It really does. I guess it does. It does feel that way. I, I, yeah, totally. Okay, we got Mad Hatter. I would like to see some improvements to Outlaws, not the stations. Leave them alone. However, I'd like maybe instead of endure, defending a freighter during a pirate attack, you can help the pirates by attacking their freighters. How about help the pirate freighters attack a citizen ship? Yeah, there's all of this sort of stuff. Heck yes. I would like it if you warp in sometimes rather than the pirates actually attacking another freighter. Maybe they're attacking one of those giant childs of Helios or a living frigate or a living freighter or something. And you come in and you sort of fend them off and try to get rid of all the pirates from killing one of these space whales or space Helios or whatever. I think there needs to be more random encounters, not just freighter attacks, but other things that you encounter. I think that would be quite cool. Okay, golly oh, we've got TJMB. What would really bring me back to No Man's Sky is having time available to play and getting a dedicated gaming PC with high-end graphics card. Yeah, I'm building a high-end PC right now myself, so I'm kind of with you on that one, to be fair. Username, EXE, not found. I think he's took a part on every single one of these polls so far. Raids, like you said, and megafauna, and like scaled down giant spiders from Skull Island and sandworms, and more reason to reach the centre of the galaxy, perhaps making the generation crazier as you get there. Since I remember uh, Jack Septic Eye saying that once No Man's Sky first came out. Yeah. That, that was pretty much what they said during the old art directions, that the closer you get to the centre, the more crazy things you get. That was Hello Games that actually said that. It's not a thing. I wish it was. I don't know why it's not. Same with the fact that they haven't done super biomes. Pickwin! Will it be cool to create your own expeditions and make your own modes, like making fugitives run tied to expedition rewards? Heck yes, pick win. That was one of the options in the actual poll, mate. I guess. Hopefully you picked that one. Cool, there we go. We've got Duffin the Muffin, or something like that. As others have stated, more than one biome over the entirety of a planet. Okay, I have things to add, being able to own your own space stations, like, for instance, liberating a pirate space station and paying for a massive overhaul to it and pick your own npcs and decide which npcs factions would be aligned like say the auto page potentially having to defend against sentinels and pirate attacks and such 
Being able to own multiple freighters and being able to lead your own expeditions, having the settlements more integral to the game, not just something that's a side thing. You see, that's my worry. If they ever did give us station ownership, would that station ownership just equate to like what we've got at settlements? You know, every time Hello Games puts in something quite awesome, they don't really put a lot of depth into the dang thing, do they? It's very sort of surface level. And all of those things that you've just mentioned are just that extra level of depth. Little bit, little bit of depth. I mean, they could go to town that a hell freaking pile of depth into there. It's like we mentioned about holding pens for your creatures and stuff like that, like zoos. That could have quite easily been companions point two or something, you know? It'd be nice if they revisit all of their different updates that they've done and go over and maybe do a reboot of it and actually put in more depth to each of the actual updates they've done so far. I would quite like that. Or if they just did one massive update and they just call it the depth charge or something like that and just put a load of depth into every single aspect that they've already put in. Steve Miller. Reading my Terrain Trade Authority books with all the amazing sci-fi art is what keeps me playing No Man's Sky. Uh, okay, cool, yeah. Do you have a fleshy bed there? Heck yeah, it's, I do like the um, artists that actually sort of helped with the art style of No Man's Sky, like Chris Foss. Heck yes. Joe, a combination of hazardous fauna and void raids would be a great update. I've always thought Desolation was one of the best updates because it pulled out more No Man's Sky's NMS loop and introduced something completely different. I often call it a game within a game. Something to do in No Man's Sky is completely different, is much needed. Something to pull you off the normal No Man's Sky loop. Hunting large bosses style fauna would be one way to do it. But going into the void as a raid would be amazing, I guess. I could take you to a brand new realm planet with a brand new assets and be great combat experience. I don't play Minecraft, but my friend has shown me the Ender Dragon stuff. And something like that would be really awesome in No Man's Sky. Could be a new planetary dungeon kind of thing. You warp into the void and it would be a mix of combat and finding clues that are procedural. Kind of similar to how derelict freighters are within the lore. Find out what's going on in particular in the void of space and battle and explore and loot your way to a boss. Heck yeah! So a little bit of everything that was in the poll. I echo that sentiment completely. I guess I do. Okay. Oh, Jemius says, I haven't stopped playing. Laugh out loud. No, well, I haven't really stopped playing. I mean, I've started a new save on my PC. I, but I'm on about what would keep you more engaged and coming back. What would make you excited? I mean, you could kind of get that from the bloody poll. Dang you. OK, right. Well, this is quite a big one from Chal Lin here. I guess being able to change a dread world into a living world would be my dream update. A dead world. Sorry, not dread world. It could be amazing to let the game group project a resource sink. But then has tro okay, so tr terrain manipulation, lovely. Colio biospheres, okay, lovely. The flora and fauna inside the sphere would act like a normal wild uh, flora and fauna could be interacted with, a little bit like zoos. Yes, player created zoos. Yeah, which has has also been mentioned inside of this poll. So it looks like two people in this poll definitely want to have zoos of some kind, which is pretty can't darn cool as an idea. Leah A Eastwood. Building. I just love building. Realistic cities and rooms. As if the inhabitants just lived there. I've built so gar. A pirate haven with a lighthouse. Moss Eisley from Star Wars. A free story library of books. Yeah, oh, there's quite a lot there to be fair. Fisher Sticks uh, 95 says more. Even more planet types. Sorry, I got I got a bit hung up on your name there, fish sticks. I do like fish sticks, especially if you've got like the Thousand Island sauce to dip them in. Oh, fish sticks, crab sticks, as I call them over here. The freaking lovely, lovely jubbly. Anyway, yeah, I do agree though. More planet types would be cool, or if they just enter added in a load of super biomes. Alex Penner, I'll play No Man's Sky more often if I could terraform maybe a larger area around my base. Maybe just the, the cover by the base computer range. I'd also like to make actual cities. Oh, cool. A few people have said cities now, haven't they? We've got Lazy Ape. 
I will come back to it, even if they don't add anything more. But deeper oceans or some planets uh, yeah, would be nice, like a thousand years deep. Yeah. Hidden chests, 100%. It'd be nice if we could have player chests. You know, like the ones that we get in the relic sites that you open with the free keys or whatever. It'd be nice if we could actually get those chests as our own. And then we can bury them wherever we like and put whatever we like in them. So, you know, at your base, you could put like little clues of where you've put your chest or whatever. Do little treasure hunts. That'd be pretty cool. Not that I think it'd keep people entertained for too long, but it's something, isn't it? And the deeper you go into oceans, the faster your life support drains. So you'd have to have your Nautilus to get to the deepest parts. They do need to give us more rhyme and reason to use our exo crafts. I mean, they did for the exo mech because it's the only one that has hazard protection now. But then he also made it that if it gets shot by a sentinel, it breaks. And it's as fragile as fudge. You need to have a freaking army of repair kits. Uh, it didn't quite work, to be honest. Not not to the point that I want to use my exomech. I'm worried about it breaking all the time. Seth's gaming and stuff. Also, I'd love to see oceans, exotic planets, and plated fishes, etc, etc. More unique colour features, more variety, frozen type planets. Yeah, I mean, all the frozen type planets have all got blue freaking skies. and no, They all look very much the same. Why can't they have ice sheets in there? Why can't the caves be like ice biome caves? There's so much that they could do to the biomes to give them all a little bit of love, which they haven't done. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel that as well. And you also mentioned having an aquarium for your bases, like proper ones, and even having those cute sea turtles. I did see you done a video on those little turtles going across the landscape asking if you could have them as pets. So yeah, Seth, gaming and stuff does videos. No narration, just gameplay. If that's your thing, hit up Seth. There it goes. We've got Lord of the Apes. Honestly, as long as they keep updating the game, I'll keep coming back, says Lord of the Apes. I guess pretty much the same. New content is always good, says AK James. I agree. However, a lot of the content they have put in over the last year has only really kept me busy for about a week to a week and a half at tops. And then after that, I'm just waiting for the next update. Hence doing these polls, doing these reaction videos to fill that time and to hear what the community has to say. Fitzgerald Micah. Hello. So many great ideas from you and the community. Well, thank you. Yes, there are some awesome ideas here, people. Double thumbs up to all of you that have taken part in this poll. Thank you very much. Okay, we've also got a chief here. We need Exocraft update. Yes, we've just touched on that. Maybe trains for braces or boats for sea. Possibly a tank to dominate sentinels. I think if we could have turrets for bases that shoot down sentinels, I might be more inclined to build on extreme sentinel wells if that was the case. Okay, cool, yeah. We've got Frost Knight. I really love to make my own bubble city in a dangerous planet. I think the settlement system needs to expand to include production of cooking and crafting goods. Also planting. If I wish I could have more than one settlement. Ah, and settlements really do need a relook. I think they need to be brought to the switch in some way, shape or form. I think they should just re-ramp them completely, to be honest. To make them work on all platforms. And not only that... Make them feel more livable. I mean, you're an overseer. An overseer of what? A couple of arguments? No, mate. Freaking do it. Add in some depth. Okay, right, we've got Default Controller. All great suggestions. Hard to pick just one. Eventually, I chose option A, terraforming and reviving dead planets. I'd also love to have more companions, like building a zoo. I think that's, what, four people now that said zoos? Yeah. Give people zoos. Hello, games. They definitely want zoos. Go on. And also, my auto feeders, harvesters, much more useful. Yeah, I would like an auto egg sort of hatchery. What do they call them? Incubators. I like that sort of stuff going on. So my creature lays an egg. It incubates. It can hatch. Or I could just have it in egg form so I can give it to other players. Heck yeah. That'd be cool. Do companions do anything except look pretty? Great for photo shoots, but that's about it. No, companions were supposed to be able to take out Hazardous Flora, which, if they did that at least, I would probably use them, especially for the Destroy Hazardous Flora missions, but they don't. It'd be nice if they did. Hello games, if you're watching, make them destroy Hazardous Flora at the very least. I guess. Okay, combining my Minotaur, Exocraft, Laylapse and the Sentinel Quad Companion feels like a waste opportunity for something, but it makes for a decent photo shoot. It really does, doesn't it? It looks like something out of Strider. 
I guess. Mike UK 666, you forgot as long as streamers bring up content to keep us interested. I guess. Well, yeah, we, we do that, I suppose. We do that in spades as content creators, don't we? Well, we've got Gumboat Willie in the house. Hello there, Gumboat Willie. You can see these little icons here. They've got a little icon there. They're a member. And you can see there, Gumboat Willie, a member for one year and one month. Thank you, Gumboat Willie. Well, I will say, once again, no new features until they fix multiplayer. They continue to complain and claim that multiplayer supports up to 32 players. And that's BS. This was an indication of how they'll be handling multiplayer. Then good luck with Light No Fire. Gumbo, Willie, I've done a whole video on Light No Fire and my concerns when it comes to multiplayer. And that was one of them. I guess. I do share those same intrepidations, my friend. We can only but wait and see. I'm really hoping. Ooh, that's an idea for another poll. What are you more excited about in the Viewerverse? Seeing a new No Man's Sky update trailer or seeing a new Light No Fire update trailer? Oh, I'm going to have to put that one on my community tab. Kev B1, I'd like just a simple fix. More NPCs everywhere to make me feel more populator, populated as an idea you came up with ages ago. See-through cockpits for the ships. In one of the early game trailers, you actually see the cockpit and it is glass. And uh, it's see-through. I don't know why they changed that out, but it'd be nice to add that back in. I have seen in Star Citizen now, you can actually do face tracking. So when you talk into your mic, your character's mouth actually moves in game. And you can do in game head tracking as well. Yeah, pretty darn nice. If I do get my PC up to scratch, I'll probably jump in and have a little play with that. Joe Mania, bigger sea creatures, tidally locked planets, miniature cities and companions, slightly longer days and nights on planets, combat either PvE or PvE. Oh, yeah. Day and night cycles for planets, if they were altered on planet to planet, that would make perfect sense because all planets rotate at a different rate. And if they've got different stars and moons and all that sort of shenanigans. Yes, mate, I kind of agree. It'd be quite cool to come across a planet that's perpetually night or perpetually day. That'd be pretty darn freaking epic, actually. Justin and Az would like to see more depth all around, and there needs to be serious missions for Quicksilver. Once a player is able to disable the Sentinels on the planet, there's nothing left to be afraid of in the game, says Justin and Az. Yeah, maybe there needs to be something that happens after you shut down the Sentinel activity, like a giant Sentinel mega boss that appears or something. I don't know. I have no idea. Or maybe, maybe the void could start creeping in and you maybe have to do a giant battle against the freaking giant worms because you've just disabled the freaking sentinels. I don't know. Maybe if they implement the void, maybe we might see some of that sort of good stuff happen. There's all sorts that they could do, though, isn't there? There's a pr procedural universe with plenty of ideas that could go in. The potential is massive. Poison Elvis, all the above. Nuff said. Heck yes, I would like a little bit of all, to be honest. Caro! Hello, Caro! Increased biodiversity on planets, more diverse flora and fauna, the ability to add pages to the Wonders catalogue. Heck yeah! We've got Robo Vader, Super Formula, an exploration overhaul, combat and enemies overhaul, strongholds and dungeons to raid and bounty hunting, factions and quests and overhaul and survival gameplay overhaul! There's a lot of overhauls in there, Robo Vader! But yeah, totally agree. They do need to just add in more depth to every single update. Is what I think they need to do. Okay, people. Well, we get we we got so many comments. You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to gingerly scroll as I talk about the sort of things that I'm hoping that we get to see in ARG Part Four. So ARG Parts One, Two, and Three have delivered in the autophages in their sort of sensibility and the fact that we can now sort of adorn their look inside of the you know the, the, the modifiers. I'm hoping that more about the Void Mother comes into play, and I am hoping that the Void opens up as a place that we might be able to go into, maybe do daily raids. In the same sort of way that we had those Pidgets when it comes to Quicksilver and jumping in and doing Quicksilver missions, I'm kind of hoping that we can jump into the raid maybe three times a day at 16 minutes per shout. You know, 16, 16, 16. See what I did there? And it'd be nice if you could combine them all together if you wanted to spend all of that time in there in one. Just depending on how you wish to play it. 
But I'm hoping that inside of the void, inside of the realm of glass, I'm hoping that it runs on loop 19. So an earlier iteration from where all these autophages are. And maybe we can find autophage ship parts, autophage multi-tools, modules of the past, including maybe multi-swords, things that were mentioned inside of the traveller law, and even maybe corrupted sentinels and corrupted travellers, like inside of the traveller's law as well. So that's the sort of thing that I'm hoping comes, and I'm hoping it comes fairly soon into iteration, people inside of the viewerverse. So anyway, peeps, I want to say a massive great big thank you to everybody that took part in the poll. Sorry if I didn't read out your comments and I just scrolled through at the end there. I could see that there was a little bit of repetition around what people would like to see. Zoos being something that rang out like a bell. Cities, an improvement to settlements. And depth adding to every single update that we've had so far. People also loving the idea of terraforming their own planets or even owning actual stations. Now, we still haven't had the station overrides delivered into game yet. We still don't know what they those station overrides are going to do are they going to launch us into another realm are they going to give us the ability to own a station what's going on with the abandoned stations as you fly in it says welcome home why why does it say that are we going to be able to own those abandoned stations are we going to be able to bring them back to life like we did in the utopia expedition because that was an abandoned area of space after you finished the utopia expedition if you went back to that area of space it was a living breathing system with a working station so it's obviously something that Hello Games have played with in that expedition. Could they deliver it in, in its full entirety? I honestly think they could. The fact that we have had the Colossal Archives having that actual repository that mentions Planet Exploration Survey, and you've got on the logs a actual Planet Survey mission to survey as much as you can, it would make sense to upload that to an archive to beam it up to a station. Now that the stations look like the archives, there's that sort of relationship there as well. Could it be that we are going to be doing a lot more cataloging to do something and have something happen with inside of a system? Maybe to get better system charts, maybe to get better loot, we can only but wait and see people. All these sorts of things make me feel quite excited that they could come into Hello Games' No Man's Sky within this year or maybe next. But at the same time, there's part of me deep down that thinks, like no fire on the cards, will Hello Games be doing a lot that isn't just surface level? Will they be going in and adding in the depth? The only thing that gives me a little bit of confidence to say that they might is they've just revisited all the guild agents and added a heck of a lot more to what the guild envoys do and how they work and how missions are worked. They've given that a little bit of a lease of life. They've also given us this ship customization in basic bones. Let's just hope they put some meat on those bones or add some depth, as I've been saying throughout this whole video. Depth is the key word for this, people. I would like to see more depth. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. In a world of screams where dreams come alive Captain Steve takes us a magical ride Through pixels and colors He guides our way with every video we escape just for a day From video games to life logs And talk so bizarre Captain Steve's channel takes us near and far He dives into the depths of the internet's realm Unveiling strange tales that overwhelm Captain Steve Our guide through this digital maze With each new upload Our worries erase We laugh We learn We explore as a team In Captain Steve's world Dreams gleam.